Hello people from the future, welcome to Normalize Nerd. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can code your very own decision tree that can solve regression problems completely from scratch. Yes, I won't be using any libraries that has already the code implemented for creating a decision tree. I will use only NumPy and Pandas. So make sure to watch this video till the end. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. It will really help me because I am running really low on subscribers. And if you want to interact with me, then feel free to join our Discord server. So let's get started. First of all, we need to import two very important libraries, NumPy and Pandas, because we are going to code everything on the basis of these two libraries. Okay. So after that, we need to get the data. Well, the data that I'm using in this video is a famous one actually. It's called airfoil noise data. You can easily find it on UCI repository. I will definitely provide the link in the description. But the problem is the data is in .dat format and pandas doesn't go well with the .dat format. So what I have done instead is I have converted the .dat format into .csv file. And if you want to access this .csv file, I'm going to post it in my GitHub repo so you can just download it from there also. Okay, as you can see, I have imported the dataset by using the read CSV function from pandas and I have stored it into a data frame. After that, I am just printing the first five rows from the data frame. And as you can see, we have got five features x0 to x4 and one target variable y. And you can see the values of y are real numbers. So this clearly tells us that we are dealing with a regression problem. Well, I don't want to go deep into the data set because I am not focused on data set here. I am just gonna show you how to code a regression. But let me give you a very quick introduction of the data set. So the target variable y is actually some kind of noise created by an airfoil. Well, you can imagine an airfoil as a wing of a plane. Yeah, the shape is kind of that. So what happens is researchers put the wing into a air tunnel and they are measuring what is the noise created by the wing as the air passes around it. Okay. And the features are different parameters corresponding to that experiment. For example, the angle at which the wind is attacking the airfoil, the speed of the wind, the length of the airfoil, etc. So let's move on to actually building our decision tree. Now here I would like to say that if you don't know the concept behind decision tree regression, then please watch my previous video because there I have explained in detail the concept of decision tree regression. If you watch that, it will be very clear to you and you can follow this tutorial very easily. Another thing. I have already coded a decision tree for classification in one of my previous videos and I will be using many functions from that video. If you find any difficulty in understanding in this video, do refer to that one because there I have explained the functions in more detail. Okay. So after we have fetched the data, I am making node class. There exist two kinds of nodes in a decision tree, leaf nodes and decision nodes. In the node class, we would define some variables. The first five variables that are feature index, threshold, right, left, variance reduction are necessary for the decision node. And the last one that is the value variable only valid for the leaf nodes. Remember that in a decision node, we need to know which feature is acting as the splitting condition and obviously the threshold corresponding to that feature. And we have also defined left and right just to move to the left child and right child of a decision node. And after that, the variance reduction just stores the variance reduction caused by a splitting corresponding to that particular decision node. Okay, let's move on. So after the node class, we have the tree class. And this is the most important portion of our code. Because in this class, I have defined the tree building method the variance reduction function, the fit method, predict method, etc. So please pay attention here. 
obviously we need to first define the constructor for our class. You can see in the constructor we have two variables named minimum sample split and maximum depth. We need these two as a stopping criteria for our tree building because we can create decision trees arbitrarily deep and that would just cause overfitting and we definitely don't want that to happen. Apart from these two variables, you will also notice I have a root variable. Well, to traverse a tree, we need to have a starting point, right? And for a tree-based data structure, root is usually taken as the starting point. After the constructor, we have the most important function, build tree function. Obviously, it's a recursive function and I'm not gonna explain this in great detail here because I have already done that in my previous video. First, we take the dataset and separate the features from the target variable. Then, we check if the stopping criteria are met. If they are not met, then we find the best split for the current dataset, which we get from the getBestSplit function. If the variance reduction by the best split is greater than zero, we split the dataset. After that, we recursively call the build tree function for left subtree and right subtree. So in this way, we are recursively creating the whole tree. After the recursion calls are done, we create the decision node. And while creating the decision node, obviously we need to pass the feature index, threshold and variance reduction corresponding to that particular node. Once we have reached the bottom most level of the tree after recurring through one of the subtrees, we need to calculate the leave value. And for that, we use the calculate leave value function. And after that is done, we just need to create the leaf node. And as I told you earlier, for creating a leaf node, we only need to pass the value. Okay, so that was the build tree function. In that function, you have noticed that I have mentioned some functions like get best split function and calculate leaf value function. Well, these functions are defined here. So for the calculate leaf function, we just need to calculate the average Y value of all the data points belonging to a particular leaf node. And for the get best split function, this is the code. So as you have already seen in the build tree function, get best split function returns a dictionary. So at first I have just defined an empty dictionary called best split. Now we are gonna loop through all the features. And inside this loop, we have to traverse through all the possible threshold values. Now the features are real numbers and there exists an infinite number of real numbers between any two real numbers. So it doesn't make sense to iterate through every possible real number. Instead, what we do, we just traverse through every possible value of a feature that we have encountered in our dataset. And np.unique function just returns the unique values of a particular feature so that we can traverse through all the possible values of that feature. Okay, so now we are inside the second loop. Here, first of all, we split the dataset based on the current feature index and the current threshold. Okay, so at this stage, we have got the left dataset and right dataset. Now we need to ensure that these are not empty. So once we know that we have something to work with, then I am just extracting the target values that is denoted by Y here. So after that, we need to compute the information gain. Remember that for a classification tree, we used entropy or Gini index as a measure of impurity. But in this regression case, we use variance. So to compute the information gain or reduction in impurity, we need to calculate the reduction in variance. And this function is written here. We are just subtracting the combined variance of the left child and the right child from the variance of the parent node. And in this formula, we need to use the weights because the number of data points in the parent node is larger 
than each of the child nodes, right? So we need to scale the variances of the child node. And the scaling factor is just the relative size of the child nodes with respect to the size of the parent. So once we have got the current information gain, we need to check if this current information gain is greater than the max information gain. If it is greater than that, then we need to update our best split. And here you can see all the keys in the best split dictionary. Once the nested loops have completed their executions, we can just return the best split. And in this function, I have used another function named split function, which you can find here. So after that comes a very nice function to print our decision tree. This function just uses the pre-order tree traversal to print the tree. After that, we have the fit function. Well, this function just concatenates the feature and the target variable and then it calls the build tree function to actually build the tree. That is to train the model. After that, we have the make prediction function. This function basically takes a single data point and finds the Y value corresponding to that data point. So to do that, we start with the root and if it meets the condition at the root node, then it goes to the left child, else it moves to the right child. And we recursively perform this process until we reach a leaf node. And at that leaf node, we can just return the value at that leaf node, okay? And at last, we have this predict function that can take a whole array of new data points and it will pass each data point to the make prediction function and will output an array of target values. Okay, so the tree class is done. Now we need to test our model. So to build the training set and test set, I am using scikit-learn here. You can see here that I am taking 20% of the whole data set for testing and 80% for training. So here comes the fitting the model portion. So first we need to create an object of our tree class. And you can see here I am restricting the depth of our tree at 3 and the minimum sample split at 3. After that we need to call the fit function and obviously we need to pass the training dataset. After that we are printing the tree. So here's the huge tree. The tree looks like this. At the root node, the condition is x0 is less than or equal to 3150 and the variance reduction at this node is around 7. So after the model is fit, we need to test it. So here is the testing. So we just need to use the predict function. In this function, we need to pass the test set as the parameter. And to measure the accuracy of our model, I am using a very popular matrix called mean squared error. You can see that the mean squared error is about 5, which is really nice. So that was all for this video guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you have, then share this video and subscribe to my channel. You can always comment your video ideas in the comment section. I do read every comment. Stay safe and thanks for watching.